to just become the unofficial drama club president of the internet. If you're new here, hi, my name's Kat. I really like musicals. If you're new here, join our theater cult. I mean, yeah, it's a, it's a cult. Let's be real, it's a cult. Hit subscribe. Today, I'm going to be answering all of your burning questions about musical theater, auditioning, being a theater kid, being an actor, just basically everything that I always see in the comments very frequently. This is gonna be your one-stop shop for all of that. Question of the day, are you prepping for any auditions? If so, let me know what show and what role down below. Let's jump into the video. What do I put on my resume if I'm brand new to acting? Basically put any kind of relevant experience. If you've taken a class, if you were in a choir, or audition someplace where they're not really expecting you to have a resume, or it's kind of conducive and welcoming to newbies. Places like that would be like a school drama club or a church choir. That way you can get experience and put it on your resume. Another big question, what kind of dance class should you take? Start with ballet. You need the foundation and the technique that's taught in ballet. All of that plays into basically every other kind of dance, so definitely start with ballet. Here's a weird question that I always get asked. Not that it's weird, because I'm full of weird questions. This is like an informational video and an informational channel, like I'm never here to shame you, but it's just like so specific, I wouldn't anticipate it as something that I get asked a lot. Should I buy blank dance shoe? Like, should I buy super expensive character shoes? I love you, Laduka. Should I buy tap shoes just for an audition? Do I really need foot undies? Here's my hot take. Get what you need get what makes sense financially and what makes sense in your career at this moment. It's fun to have lots of toys and feel professional and cool and stylish, but you know what isn't fun and really sucks when you spend a bunch of money on something and then you rarely use it or you never use it. And then you can spend that money elsewhere toward like more coaching or leotards or headshots or whatever. That being said, if you're like joining theater and you need to have a dance shoe to like be in an audition room and stuff like that because a lot of places won't let you wear street shoes into a dance studio, jazz shoes are the way to go. Where do I find auditions? I have a whole video on that. I'll link that down below. What should I wear to blank audition? I have a whole video on that. I'll link that down below. What should I sing at blank audition? I have a I whole have video, a whole on, video that. on that. I'll link I'll that link down, down below. below. All jokes aside, I have like a whole playlist on acting and musical theater advice, which I will link down below. Basically, any specific topic that you have questions on, I probably have a video on it. Here's something that I see a lot, a lot, a lot. Like this is probably the number one most frequently asked thing I see. Will blank hurt my chances of getting cast. And in that blank, you can insert being too tall, too short, too skinny, too chubby, having purple hair, not having piercings, having tattoos, curling your hair, wearing heels, wearing jeans, literally anything into that blank. And the answer is, Yes and no. Every single casting situation and audition is different. Sometimes you'll fit the needs of the production and sometimes you won't. And sometimes you will fit the needs of the production, but someone else will fit it just a little bit better. The important thing to keep in mind is that you can't control any of that. So focus on what you can control. You can control your training and your audition preparedness. Be professional, be polite, be off book, do your research, know the material, be familiar with the show. And let me just say, as someone who has a little bit of experience behind the table, the difference between you curling your hair and straightening your hair isn't really going to be the breaking point. If it really matters that much to a team, you know what they'll say? For the next round of callbacks, would you mind straightening your hair? Don't put so much focus into that stuff, you know? However, with all of that being said, make an educated guess and help out those casting directors. For instance, if you're auditioning for Sarah Brown in Guys and Dolls, maybe take out your septum piercing. If you're auditioning for Sally Bowles in Cabaret, maybe don't show up in sweatpants with no makeup. Another big thing I see is how to deal with rejection or a bad audition. Basically, my model of like what I figured out works for me is that that I give myself like the rest of the day to just be really sad. Like I will go the full nine yards. I'm talking ice cream, I'm talking crying, like ugly crying mascara dripping into the pillow. And then I get over it. I pick myself back up and I move on. If there's something that I can fix or learn from that experience, I'll either write that down or like really internalize it. And then I move on. You being sad over something that you can't control anymore is 
kind of pointless and I feel is just kind of toxic to your well-being as a person and a performer and an artist because you're awesome and everyone has bad days. How do you deal with favoritism? True and honest favoritism is just such a sticky situation and more time than it's worth to try to like get yourself in there. So personally I would just leave and I'd audition elsewhere. I wouldn't get involved within the drama of that drama. Puns. But something that I think is really important to ask yourself is why is there that favoritism? Is it because, you know, that person's parents like donate a ton of money to the theater department with the understanding that their kid will get a big role? Or like maybe that kid is the director's nephew. That is serious favoritism and not really something that you can do anything about. So that's why I'd leave. Is the situation different? Does that person keep getting cast as the lead because they're really talented or they have a lot of experience? or the director knows them well enough that they know that casting them is going to be a safe and reliable option? Are they just really professional and delightful to work with? Those are all valid reasons to keep casting someone, and they happen all the time, even in the real world. And here's the best part. You can become that person. Get more experience, get more training, show that you're reliable, show up early and ready to work. People want people who want to be there. So become that person. I'm all fired up, like I feel so like, Aah! I'm ready to take over the world. I really shouldn't be allowed to have coffee like right before I film. Oh, here's a big one that I see a lot. I feel like I'm not talented enough. Our queen, Laura Benanti once said, auditioning is my favorite way to hate myself. This career in general, even if you're not doing it as a career, if it's just a hobby, it's very easy to compare yourself to other people. John Mulaney, who I think is an honorary theater kid at this point. Oh my God, wait, no, he was on Broadway. He's just a theater kid now, right? Yeah, all in favor? Voting John Mulaney in to the cult? Yes? Okay. He has a great story about being at work and looking around the room and being like, oh my gosh, I don't deserve to be here. And he turns to his coworker next to him who had been there for longer and goes, I feel like a fraud. And his coworker says, don't worry, everyone feels like a fraud. That was in the writer's room at Saturday Night Live. Everyone in their entire life, whether or not they're in this field or an artistic field or like a STEM field, everyone feels that way. And if they haven't felt that way, then they have like an inordinate amount of self-confidence and they're probably a sociopath. It's completely normal. Something that really helps me is that I like to find things about myself that I like that aren't talent-based or role-based or merit-based. It's stuff like I'm a good friend. I enjoy making people laugh. I'm a hard worker. I'm really good at eating sushi. That's a lie. I choke on the seaweed like constantly, but it's still my favorite food. Finding something outside of theater to validate you as the kind of person that you want to be can really help if you have an off day. If you're new here, hit subscribe to join our cult. I'm not even hiding it anymore. Let's be real. It's just a cult. I hope you guys are having a great day. I love you so, so much. Break a leg and I'll see you guys next time. Uh, I just choked on my own saliva. Boys, get at me. Bye.